Hi class. So we are now with the hemodynamic disorder, so second part. And included in this session would be the slides pertaining to pulmonary embolism, that's 139. We have 18, acute kidney infarct, 38, acute myocardial infarct, 31, acute lung infarct, and 106, acute infarct of the small bowel. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. Okay. So let us uh, move around with the first slide, which is uh, 139 pulmonary embolism. Okay. So what do you think this slide is? Of course, by the name, it's lung tissue. We can appreciate the presence of those spaces again, which are the alveoli. We have the thin walled structures, which are called the alveolar walls or interstitium. Okay. So what's the problem in this case? So based on the name of the slide, it's uh, pulmonary embolism. So we are going to look for a vessel wall that is occluded. Okay, so this one. So this is the vessel wall that is occluded. And what is the meaning of an embolus? So an embolus would refer to a detached intravascular. It can be solid like this one. It can be liquid or it can be gaseous uh, mass that is carried by the blood from its point of origin to a distant site. So if we are talking about uh, pulmonary embolism, the most common etiology or origin of, a, of an embolus to the lung would be from the deep vein, uh, deep vein uh, veins of the leg. So that's why we call them as DVT or deep vein thrombosis. Okay, uh, it can occlude the main pulmonary artery and into its um, its branches, or it can be seen at the pulmonary bifurcation, and that is what we call as the saddle saddle embolus. Okay, so for this particular instance, you can see that the embolus would not be detached to the to the endothelium or to the wall. And what would be the other characteristic feature that would tell you that this is an embolus, okay? Or a thrombus for that matter, because they are the same. So you would see the laminations of the light and dark areas, okay? So this would represent the lines of sun, light and dark areas, okay? So this is an, a pulmonary embolus, but as you can see, we have to look at the adjacent structures for any sign of complications. So what do you mean by complications? If there would be an occlusion of the blood vessel, one of the complication would be ischemia okay, or necrosis. So in this case, you still see the presence of those viable uh, alveolar walls. So this is more of a chronic pulmonary embolism, okay? Now we go to slide 18. What's this one? Slide 18 is acute kidney infarct, okay? So, or a kidney infarct. And I think we have taken this already during our chapter on uh, adaptation cellular injury and when you talk about an infarction, this would refer to an area of ischemic necrosis. Okay? And that would be brought about by occlusion of either the arteries or the veins. In this case, if you are talking about a kidney infarct, we are talking about an arterial occlusion. And uh, in the book, it says that there are two types of infarction. So one type of infarction would be affecting the solid organ with a single arterial circulation, which we would call as white infarct. And this is an example of a white infarct. So what do we see with the white? So 
So when you are going to be asked, what is the type of infarction? Then you answer, of course, white infarct or red infarct. Give the type of necrosis that would be present. Okay. So what do you think? It's a coagulative necrosis. Okay. So here you would readily identify the four compartments or the compartments of the of the kidney, okay, of the kidney morphology. So this would be the glomerulus, you have the tubules, the interstitium, and then you have the blood vessel. Um, with regards to ischemic necrosis or infarction, all of them would be affected. And you always remember the principle of coagulative necrosis, okay, and that would be protein denaturation. So if you have protein denaturation, the affected part would be the nucleus. So in this case, there's absence of the nucleus in, uh, in this area. Okay, these are red blood cells. Okay, red blood cells. So there's absence or disappearance of the nucleus. We have cariolysis in this case. Okay, so this is acute kidney infarct. Okay, next we have slide 30, uh, 38, okay. Slide 38 is acute myocardial infarction. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a, an infarcted area here. And because the heart is a solid organ, we regard it as having a white infarct. Okay. And you would see the presence of eosinophilia of the cells. There's still the presence of some with nuclei, but because this is already an infarcted area, this is considered as cariolysis, or there's a fading of the chromatin uh, within the, uh, of the nucleus. You can see the presence of blood vessels of the blood or red blood cells. You have the presence of segmenters, okay. These are signs of, of uh, increased in uh, interstitial fluid, okay, with a separation of the uh, muscle fibers. So we have the fibrin, red blood cells, and then you have the segmenters. So this is acute myocardial infarction. So I'll just let you appreciate the other areas of the slide. Okay, so these are still portions of it. Notice, okay, there's a distinct difference between this particular area and this one. So this is the one with infarction. This is normal, okay? There, you can see the difference between the affected ones and the ones that are viable. So this is the longitudinal portion. You can see a lot of inflammatory cells because this would occur within minutes or hours. So the first uh, inflammatory cells that would be present would be the segmenters. Okay. So next we go to slide 31, which is acute infarct of the lung. Okay. So as compared to the uh, slide 139, we are going to look for again for a an occluded vessel wall. Okay, let's again appreciate the beauty of the slide. So you can see a lot of those alveolar structures, but here they would be congested. Okay, and they are filled with, uh, I think red blood cells and fibrin, okay, so there may be pulmonary edema, but there's a difference in the appearance of the, of the interstitium or the alveolar wall, okay. So 
So I think this one is the culprit. So this is a large embolus. Okay. So this is a large embolus. It caused the infarction of the adjacent structure. You can see the presence of those uh, laminations, which are the lines of sand, okay? light and dark red areas. And now the adjacent structure, the alveoli, are filled with red blood cells. Why is this so? Because it has a dual circulation, okay, consisting of the uh, pulmonary uh, artery and veins. And uh, you would see presence of coagulative necrosis. So if we're going to be asked what is the type of infarct, you say red infarct, okay? And then you would see uh, presence of interstitial spaces that are, that are not appreciable. Okay, so you cannot appreciate it. There's a presence of a hemorrhage, presence of hemosiderin laden macrophages. Okay. So take note of the appearance of the interstitium because you need to differentiate it from the pulmonary congestion, uh, pulmonary edema or pulmonary congestion. Okay. So this is uh, acute lung infarct. Okay. Next is slide 106, our last slide. And this is an acute infarct of the small bowel. Okay. So this is um, okay, this is a small intestine. So I think this is, uh, most probably, this is from the jejunum. Okay. Uh, whenever you have an infarction of the small intestine or large intestine, the type of infarct that we would see would be a red infarct because of the dual circulation. And uh, there are forms of infarction here. So in this case, uh, this would be the mucosa, this would be the muscularis mucosae, this would be the submucosa. So it affects only the mucosa and submucosa. So this would be a mucosal uh, to submucosal infarction. Okay. But if you would see this area, okay, you see the ghost outlines of the of the okay of the uh, villi. Okay, you can see the uh, ghost outlines, and then you have a lot of areas of hemorrhage. These are intestinal glands. This would be the muscularis mucosa, submucosa. This would be the muscle. Okay, so this would be the muscle layer. So it's transmural. So if it affects the entire thickness of the small intestine or the large intestine for that matter, then this is called a transmural infarct. Okay, however, if you're going to be asked, what is the type of infarct? You call it as a red infarct. Type of necrosis, coagulative necrosis. Okay, so those are the slides, remaining slides that we have for hemodynamic disorders. So thank you and good day.